Okay, so if you look at the, uh, so left hand one, I've drawn these lines on earlier now, okay? The left hand one was your before, okay? As you went back, you went forwards and down. So basically your head kind of went diagonally down towards the golf ball this way, okay? So you've shortened the gap between you and the golf ball, all right? Now on the way back, you've got to do some different adjustments. You've got to move back the way, but haven't really sort of gone up high enough. So you've got to sort of like pull the arms in and get this sort of tucked up sensation, as you said, hunched, okay? To try and find some space. Coming to the golf ball here now, left arm, so I'm trying to pop out of the way, trying to hold on to it, because this is just after a couple of shots that have gone left, and the ball then goes off to the right there, kind of like a pushy, cutty one, okay? This one here now, we didn't drop, okay? We just went forward a smidge, okay? But at least we kept our height better, yeah? So you've gone forward slightly, which is, again, your body rotation, but you haven't really sort of dipped down to the ball quite so much. Now, obviously, when you're the same height here, you're now effectively further than the ball or further from the ball than you're used to. So when your head stays there and comes back a little bit, you see the striker is a little bit on the toe side of the club, okay? Which is going to cause, especially with hybrids, because of the sort of bulging and effect of the face, that sort of toey hooky one. You may have heard the phrase, that sort of toey hook shot, okay? The way the club works is they're going to try and stop the ball going too far to the right with a toe strike and then draw it back, okay? So you might get a few funky strikes there, but ultimately, at least through the ball, there's a bit more freedom with your arms to release. You can see your elbow there, a bit more down to the ground. It's actually below your shoulder rather than sort of popped up here. You're not sort of trying to get out of your own way. It's a bit more kind of released down and through. And then finishing up on that left side with a reasonable shot in this case, okay? So I think that the feeling is going to be staying in the same position. You can make some swings up against the wall there with your body position, just sort of rotating this way. Get a foam finger or just get your wrist to put around on your head, <laughs> whatever it may be. Yeah. Just get the sensation that we're rotating a little bit more in posture. The second you lose your height and go nearer the ball and down, you've now got to make an adjustment on the way back through, which will either mean sort of jumping up out of the way, pulling your arms in, or both. Yeah? <laughs> the shorter the club is, the better you are at doing that. Yeah? Eight, nine, seven, six is probably about five, maybe hybrid you kind of cut off. As you then go into longer clubs, Maybe not quite as successful with that, okay? So it's going to be practicing some of these shots there. I mean, overall, the swing is looking good. There's some good things in the swing there, face some sort of setup, face on and down the line. We've got a really nice sort of base sort of setup there now, nice sort of relaxed position. You look a lot more free now in terms of swing. There's not this sort of like tense look in your sort of setup and sort of walking around like a sort of statue now, kind of really stiff and rigid. Yeah, there's a lot more flow to your, to your swing. I say the club's going back. I think if you hit some good strikes, and they just go straight left or straight right. Just look at your alignment. Yeah. Have you aimed there? If it's a good connection, a good ball foot, and a good, all good, apart from just it went that way straight or that way straight, you may have well aimed it. I suppose it's on the golf course. If it did that or that, chances are the club face has been a bit of an issue. You may have either turn the club face or you've done it with your arms, the club face or whatever it may be to cause that club to, to change the ball direction again. But generally speaking, if it's a good strike and a good shot, just change the easiest thing, yeah? Change setup, yeah? If I can aim to a different direction, then that might just fix the fault. Then we don't have to worry about doing too many changes on the golf course. If you've got a ball hooking to the left, the next one, then you try to stop going left, and we just saw the next two or three went way to the right. The same with the irons, where there's a couple of pushy ones with the irons, the next one then went way to the left. So exaggerating or adjusting from one shot to the next will generally be too much. And you just go right, left, right, left. Then you're sort of no man's land. Yeah, I'd rather the ball just go one way a little bit more than you want to, and you're just readjusting your body at setup, yeah. and still swinging it well. Yeah, so you're not changing your swing, especially on the golf course, because once you try and change your goals, you just lose it. Yeah, you make one change, two change, three change. No, then we're doing too many things in your head, and that is just a complete. As we've seen before, meltdown. But I think pleasing the fact you're out on the course now, and you're feeling more confident, and you actually be able to play a lot better and and do what you want to try and do and get out there. But yeah, I just be aware of that kind of spot. I think for you, the feeling is right shoulder, right hip. Yeah, Get that kind of going behind your head this way rather than trying to think about your left shoulder kind of going down. So when he goes this way, you kind of get pulled down with it. Yeah, if that right shoulder comes behind you a bit more, you tend to kind of rotate your left shoulder anyway. It's almost impossible not to because you can't pull that and then stretch your chest open, can you? Yeah. All right, buddy? Make yep. sense? Good stuff, very good.